Time to move on, build new, fresh things. Sparks to fly, metal to burn. Burn my hair off. So this is a Factory 5 truck. I see a lot of them ripping around racing and we're gonna do like an Indian inspired truck. So we're gonna have splitters and spoilers and we'll see what happens. Brum, 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 brum. Am I clear? Yeah. The engine's an LS3. It's 430 horsepower crate motor. <laughs> nope, nope. Oh, I, you, I thought you said tip it in. <laughs> We're one mount short. Well, that's no bueno. Pedal hung, column sitting in it. Some of the electronic steering components are mounted. You got some on the firewall here, and then you got the motor for it down here on the chassis. The steering linkage is all in. The lines are all finished and clamped, and we're starting on the fuel system right now. We can get all the holes drilled in this, and then we're gonna paint this black, and then we're gonna take it up to our laser guy, 3D Dan, upstairs, and have him do some kind of cool design on the front of it. So it'll have all these nice Allen with copper washers like Justin loves. I am installing the electric fuel pump into the housing that goes inside the fuel tank. All right. Just shove this in there. Just shove it in the hole. Uh, I don't want to break it. You get me struggling, Phil. Bet you there's easier ways at home. Everybody on TV is going to be like, hey. Just get a hose why pusher. You, yeah, why don't you do one of those things? There's more lubrication, I guess. I'm feeling the rubber off into my fingers. I apologize for using that fella's name. You don't want them too close to the exhaust. Anything moving is usually a bad thing to have them next to. If they're hanging too low, like on the bottom side of, you don't want to put them down on the bottom where if you do bottom out on a speed bump or something, this thing's gonna be like four and a half inch off the ground. So you don't wanna catch them on anything and tear them, smash them, pinch them. See there? Somewhat level. I don't know. This, is, this one's too tight. You need to come over and down. If we go right there, that's where it's gonna be. Just make sure you're, you've got clearance there. You don't wanna be up against that. Just like that. I'm getting hungry. All right, so front grill, radiator, and fan. Whew. Oh, fancy radiator, fans, and hoses, and pieces. Oh, my. You gotta take the grill and lay it out, put the radiator on top of it to mark all your holes for the mounting to make sure they're all lined up. Well, that's horrible. If 
fits right in here, they say. Hmm. I'm going to take off almost three quarters of an inch and roughly seven eighths of an inch to sit where it kind of needs to be, I think. I'm not the best at drawing straight lines, so don't be giving me a hard time. again. The tabs are not perfectly square off of the radiator. Probably when I welded them, it flexed them some. So, and then this isn't perfectly flat to everything. So I'll have to mark the holes. I just got to make sure it's square in the, the grill. My brother had a, a Trans Am back in the day. And we used to see how fast we can get it up to. And over in Mexico, I think we hit like 170 one time probably shouldn't have been doing that. I don't know, there's so many things, Phil. We probably shouldn't be here today. What's the, what's the craziest thing that we ever did in a car? Drive shaft coming apart about 110 mile an hour with him sitting next to me in his car. Yeah, running down the road. Yeah. We were dumb. So what are you making here? You making burgers or steaks? Uh, I'm gonna make it's that thick <laughs> Holy crap. You feel it? How heavy it is. Oh, that's crazy. And the notches that they, um, they had were here, and I had to go here. <laughs> oh, sorry, Phil. <laughs> sorry, I just cussed. I mean, I mean. You doing burrows for me? Yeah. I don't like the way they did it. The plates aren't long enough, like the show in the picture. A long time ago, when we were in car club, with my family was in a car club called the Poverty Rod. We used to take old cars and put old tires on the back of them, take them out on the old concrete slab and do burnouts until they blow and then they get down to the bare rim and shoot sparks and they called the old sparkies. This one's right on the edge all the way across. It's just annoying because of the pictures, it shows the plates are like the same width, the same width as the, the plates that they welded in. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's not the case. Well, something's changed whether this came from a different vendor or this came from a different vendor or maybe it was the new guy's turn to put these on and <laughs> it didn't get right. But you know, the ones you can use, I would use. And that way I can bolt it or like kind of put bolts in it to guide to keep it there and then redo them. making the holes larger since the studs don't line up with the holes in the fan. It's a lot easier to open the plastic up than it is to bend the bolts coming through the stainless. As well as everything else on this is fitted together. This thing is the opposite. There we go. Much gooder. 
Menomenon. Menomenon. Hey, give her a whirl, Earl. Heavy, heavy girl. You're slide in? Yeah, I got the stuff there to open it up a little further. Okay. You're bottoming out on the slots, I think. No, yeah, I just want to make sure that yeah. where we snug it, we're not sitting on the frame. Plenty of room between the engine and the radiator. It's cool looking. Starting to look like a truck or something. Looking like a, a go-kart with a grill. Oh. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna go to that operation game, are you? No. You put your fuel lines there. I was trying to put them right in your way. You did. Yes. Right there? Yep. Okay. Oh. Sorry, Phil. I moved. Son of a. Oh, yeah. You're way off. Which way? Right there. Yahtzee. So the fuse box has to be mounted somewhere. The ECU's got to be mounted somewhere. So I'll see where they plan on mounting that if there's a plate that it goes on in there or if it's supposed to just go to the back side of that firewall plate. And that box up there with all the extra plates and mounting plate stuff, there might be a plate in there for that. Hey, do you want me to mask up where we're shooting the ins this edge? This um, a little bit of stuff yeah. here and there. Yeah, go ahead. I think if you keep that black just underneath that lip, yeah, it'll just, hide it in there. Yeah, yeah just right on that, yeah. right on that edge. Yeah, right just, edge I, don't, right. I don't want to see the black off the grill because then it's going to have like a, a split between it. Okay, so you're wanting, to cut, you're wanting to green to make yep. sure this is, okay. Yeah, so just right in there. That'll work, cool. Oh, just uh, <laughs> sanding my fingertips away so I can turn everything green again. It's like deja vu all over, except this time it's uh, fiberglass, which makes it a little more challenging than steel, but uh, has, its, has its perks. Makes the body work a little harder, right, Harold? Oh yeah, it makes the body work fun. <laughs> we got most of the panels painted uh, last week. Bedsides, grill, dash is done. So prepping the door here, the other one's ready. It's hanging in the booth. Get this finished up, get it in the booth and get some green on these. And then Harold's got the cab over there in the prep station and he's about done with uh, that first round of sanding. We'll get some more high build on that and make sure she's nice and straight. And hopefully have that green by, what do you think? Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, we should be good to go by then. Get so it all sanded down, looking nice. Put the whole truck back together and go play in it for a little while before we go tear it up and Tulsa. Well, you know we're gonna put it in the pit. See what kind of racket we can make and how bad we can tear up the tires on it. So I say we, but we both know it's just Justin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can break it. I don't want to pay to fix it. So I'm good. Cheering from the sidelines. I'll be a little cheerleader, minus the skirt. Oh, you look good in a skirt. Get your mind out of the gutter, sir. <sighs> That's the home away from home, man. <laughs> no, this is going to be a this is going to be an awesome ride. Anybody be thrilled to have one of these. I'll tell you what, man. Things will be light and fast. Yeah, this thing's going to be awesome. Hey, want to co-sign alone with me, Ziggy? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Well, then I guess I'm not going to have one. Think I'll let us take turns on it? <laughs> no.
we're gonna put these nice fancy looking valve covers on to dress up the motor a little bit so it's not quite so plain and ugly. It's cheap, easy to do. Probably one of the easiest things you can do to make it look better. This lower part is taller than a stock one, so if you had like a roller rocker or something in there, you'd probably gain a little clearance there so they didn't hit the valve cover. This is just stock valve train, so this is just for looks. about these is the, it's the coils this little cleaner see it puts them at a different angle tucks them underneath the covers transfer our coil wires over her coil plugs see how it does with the fuel line. Not too good. The fuel line coming out straight like this, I'm pretty sure it's gonna hit that tall cover. So we'll just pop the line off and see if it's gonna clear that way. If it is, we'll have to modify that or get a different fitting. no good. The angle of the coils to keep it from coming down and lining up. The angle that they're at, it's hitting the edge of the hole here and won't let it come over enough to sit down into the channel like it should. So we're going to try tipping it to the extreme. It's not slotted at all. It's whatever plays just in the bolt holes on the coil itself. As you can see there's a little little play in there so if we max it out hopefully that gives it just enough Ooh, so close guess we'll get the boss involved and see if he wants to Open the holes up. There's a problem, I don't want to hear about it. Uh, it's, not, it's not much a problem as it is an opportunity. An opportunity? To, what, to cut some To modify <laughs> the valve covers. Coil packs? Well, maybe the coil packs. So uh, they go on and it doesn't matter which valve cover you use. And the coils have, are turned as far as they'll go. You're just worried about them sticking out like that? No, I'm worried because it won't go down to where it's supposed to. It's sitting oh. on the on the actual coil. And both of them are the same. You can't you can't clock them? Oh I did I'd turn them as far as I could and still keep the bolt in the hole. I mean if you ran one bolt, you could probably turn them or if you made something to hmm. Well that's stupid. That's, that's dumb. Can never just be easy. <laughs> well, they need to be on there, so I yeah. guess just grind bigger holes. Carbide bits probably your best bet. The way it gets everywhere and in your armpits. Yes, yeah. that's my favorite. Glittery and pokey. Maybe all shimmery by the end of the day. Go unicorns. Guess what I wanted when I got up this morning. How can I make myself sparkly? Ugh. Stupid cars. Done with them. We're opening a donut shop. And coffee. You gotta have whiskey for the coffee. And rum. We gotta take a bunch because of the insulation on the boots. We're already touching without that, and that's 
over an eighth inch thick as it is. So I'll take quite a bit out of them. Rather it look dumb than be blind. It almost looks like I had some idea what I was doing. Don't tell nobody. That'll do. One down, one to go. <laughs> Yay me. Good Street Slime 2.0 on the dyno. We're about to fire it up, run through the gears, get some heat in it. So I haven't really driven this truck yet. We took it out in the parking lot the other day. We got it running. I barely hit the throttle and the thing just lights the tires off and it's not even got a good tune in it yet. So we're not trying to break any records today with dyno numbers. I'm just trying to get it to where everything works right. We got enough fuel, it stays cool because I'm gonna take this out right out of the box and beat on it and do burnouts and drifts and have fun with it. That's what it's for. But right now we're just trying to Get it running. Go ahead and get me key on and we'll figure out which software it is. Uh, did this really rip to 7,000? Um, it did do a, a burnout with it, or like a real quick short one. I'm excited to see what it's going to do when it's running on all cylinders and running like it's supposed to. Uh, are we on the dyno? Or? We are on the dyno. Yeah, so yeah, basically all I, all I really need you to do is just, we can get it fired up. This is a Jaguar? This is a factory 535 hot rod truck with an LS3 4L70. Okay. It's pretty neat. All together should, they say it should weigh about 2350, I think. Man, sneeze on that thing and it'll get sideways, huh? Yeah, that's, that's what he plans on doing. We're going, we'll be in Tulsa in a couple weeks um, for that Starbird car show down there. Oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get it fired up. dip right in the middle there but it was also fourth gear so there's something going on where if I put it in first it stays in first if I put it in second it shows that it's in fourth so it's running out of fuel there like running out or there's something well it's got 10 gallons in it so it's not physically out it's just not getting it No, there's a, it's a, some sort of factory tank with a drop-in pump, C comes right out of that, runs down the frame rail, or runs about a foot, goes through a filter, then runs the length of the vehicle up to the regulator, from the regulator into the factory fuel rail on the LS3. Okay, I'll check into it real quick. What a, thanks. Now I said uh, 
said we need to put that fuel gauge back in there and then check to see if, if how much it's dropping or if it's dropping. And then his other concern was since um, everything on this thing was pretty much in the book Ford stuff, that that's a Ford fuel pump basically, so it doesn't carry the pressure it needs for the LS. The injectors are big enough for, I think, see it's 720 horse or something, so we're definitely not there. <laughs> so. Good stuff, making things happen here at Nichols Paint and Fab. Time to move on, build new fresh things. Sparks to fly, metal to burn. Burn the hair off. So this is the Factory 5 truck. I see a lot of them ripping around racing and we're gonna do like an Indy inspired truck. So we're gonna have splitters and spoilers and we'll see what happens. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Starboard show. We're gonna be doing burnouts in two hours, something like that. Brum, 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 brum. Can I clear? Yeah. The engine's an LS3. It's 430 horsepower crate motor. <laughs> Steering linkage is all in. The lines are all finished and clamped, and we're starting on the fuel system right now. Just shove this in there? Shove it in the hole. Fancy radiator. Fits right in here, they say. Hmm. Starting to look like something. Looking like a go-kart with a grill. Where, oh, where? We're one mount short. Well, that's no bueno. Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.